Welcome to this edition of News Today, a series where we briefly discuss and analyze the important news of the day. Without delay, let's explore the headlines first. India has made the first crude oil payment to United Arab Emirates in rupees. The new regulations applicable for unified payments interface transaction has come into force. The think tank Global Trade Research Initiative has presented a report on India's exports. Union Cabinet approves 1250 crore rupees for India's participation in Square Kilometer Array Observatory or SKAO project. A report titled Trade Policy Tools for Climate Action was released by World Trade Organization. India-Australia Economic Cooperation and Trade Agreement has completed one year. Starting with the first news. India has made the first crude oil payment to United Arab Emirates in rupees. It is part of India's broader efforts to diversify oil suppliers and establish rupee as a viable international trade settlement currency. Payment in rupees for crude oil from UAE is as per agreement signed between two countries in July 2022, which aims to boost India's efforts to cut transaction costs by eliminating dollar conversions. It is one of the steps in the internationalization of rupee. Further now, let's dive into the details to understand more about internationalization of rupee. Internationalization of rupee is a process that involves increasing use of local currency in cross-border transactions. The internationalization of rupee holds paramount significance. Firstly, it reduces the cost of doing business. Also, it reduces dollar demand and strengthens the Indian rupee for import and export trade. Furthermore, it serves as a strategic maneuver to make the economy less vulnerable to global currency shocks. Managing exchange rate volatility becomes more efficient and it also contributes to enhanced projects' external stability. Now let's understand the potential challenges in internationalization of rupee. A potential reduce in autonomy over monetary policies, it may result in increased volatility in rupees exchange rate in initial stages. Additionally, India operates a partially convertible capital account which allows a limited rupee exchange. Now let's talk about various initiatives taken for internationalization of rupee. RBI allowed trade settlement in rupees through special Vostro accounts in July 2022. Currency swaps agreements were also signed with Sri Lanka and Maldives to promote internationalization of rupee. And issuance of offshore rupee denominated masala bonds were also allowed. Moving on to the next news. The new regulations applicable for unified payments interface transaction have come into force. Several reforms have been announced to expand the scope of UPI by the Reserve Bank of India and National Payments Corporation of India. First, let's understand what UPI is. UPI is a system that powers multiple bank accounts into a single mobile application. It merged several banking features, seamless fund routing and merchant payments into one hood. If we talk about the key reforms introduced, then it includes the introduction of UPI for the secondary market, allowing limited pilot customers to block fund post-trade confirmation and settling payments on a T-plus-one-day basis through clearing corporations. The T-plus-one-day settlement rule mandates that trade-related settlements must be completed within one day from the transaction date. Additionally, inactive UPI IDs and number will be deactivated after it will cover accounts that have been inactive for one year. Transaction limits for hospitals and educational institutes have been raised from Rs 1 lakh to Rs 5 lakh per transaction. UPI light wallets now have an increased transaction limit of rupees 500 up from 200 rupees, enabling payments without an internet connection. Notably, certain transactions such as credit card repayments, mutual fund subscriptions, and insurance premiums up to rupees 1 lakh no longer require additional factor authentication. Moving on, the think tank Global Trade Research Initiative has presented a report on India's exports. The report sheds light on the factors contributing to India's weak export performance across various sectors. One significant challenge lies in the issues associated with free trade agreements or FTAs, where many Indian firms refrain from utilizing the FTA route due to the already low import duties in partner countries. The compliance cost related to FTAs often outweigh the tariff benefits. Moreover, the policies of developed countries such as the United States and the European Union pose obstacles with high import duties to discourage imports and substantial subsidies to promote exports. Agricultural exporting nations like Australia always push India to reduce duties and subsidies on agricultural commodities, influencing their competitive edge through advanced technology. Additionally, infrastructural deficits in the agricultural sector 
quality control concerns and non-tariff barriers further contribute to the challenges in India's export performance. Now let's talk about the recommendations for improving export performance. Prioritizing the modern infrastructure and quality control in the agricultural sector, diversifying the agricultural export basket is also crucial. In negotiating FTAs, priority shall be given to creation of common ex-culture list and establishing sectoral agreements. If we talk about India's initiatives for export promotion, then it includes Foreign Trade Policy 2023, Agriculture Export Policy of 2018, One District, One Product or Districts or Export Hubs initiatives, and Export Credit Guarantee Corporation, which provides export credit insurance. Moving on to the next news, Union Cabinet approves Rs 1,250 crore for India's participation in Square Kilometre Array Observatory or SKAO project. The SKAO is an intergovernmental organization headquartered in the United Kingdom dedicated to advancing radio astronomy. The SKAO project will encompass one global observatory operating two telescopes across three sites. Two of these telescopes will be situated in radio quiet locations in South Africa and Australia, functioning as one cohesive unit. The anticipated operational date for these telescopes is set for 2029. The objectives of the SKAO includes gaining insights into the birth of universe, detecting gravitational waves which are an invisible ripple in space, and understanding the evolution of galaxies, dark matter, and cosmic magnetism. India has been an associate member of the SKAO since 2012 and has actively contributed to the pre-construction phase of the SKA telescopes. In 2022, the National Centre for Radio Astronomy in Pune formalized its cooperation with SKAO. Notably, India's Giant Meter Wave Radio Telescope, or GMRT, plays a crucial role in the SKAO project. The significance for India is profound. Joining the SKAO allows Indian astronomers direct access to the world's premier radio astronomy facility in the future. Furthermore, this initiative is expected to propel advancements in various technological domains, from antennas and electronics to data and software, including cutting-edge areas like artificial intelligence. Moving on to the next news. A report titled Trade Policy Tools for Climate Action was released by World Trade Organization. It covers 10 trade policy areas that governments could consider as part of their strategies to promote sustainable and support United Nations Climate Change Conference COP28's climate mitigation efforts. Let's discuss the major trade policy tools aimed at addressing climate change challenges. The actions include trade facilitation measures to expedite custom clearance and reduce greenhouse gas emissions linked to inefficient producers. The use of international standards in regulations and certification is proposed to prevent regulatory fragmentation while upgrading energy efficiency rules. Import tariffs accelerate transition to green economy by rebalancing tariff policies that may inadvertently benefit carbon-intensive sectors. Reforming subsidies that support environmentally harmful activities is emphasized to redirect resources towards climate action and strengthening of sanitary and cytosanitary measures are advocated to protect economies from disease and pests exacerbated by climate change. Additionally, internal taxation and carbon pricing are recommended to reduce policy fragmentation and compliance costs by improving coordination of climate-related issues. International trade significantly impacts climate as a sustainable portion, around 20-30% to 30 of total carbon dioxide emissions, which accounts for greenhouse gases emissions, is linked to international trade. Major contributors to these emissions are sectors including energy and transportation, which collectively contribute more than 75% of greenhouse gas emission embedded in international trade. The accelerated use of natural resources associated with increased trade intensifies the strain on ecosystems escalating environmental degradation. A notable example is the surge in palm oil demand, driving the clearing of rainforests in Indonesia, leading to deforestation. Moving ahead, India-Australia Economic Cooperation and Trade Agreement has completed one year. India-Australia Economic Cooperation Trade Agreement was the first free trade agreement of India with a developed country signed after more than a decade in April 2022 and entered into force in December 2022. The Economic Cooperation and Trade Agreement provides an institutional mechanism to encourage and improve trade between two countries. Before moving further, let's talk about India-Australia relations. 
Both countries, India and Australia, share a robust strategic partnership evidenced by regular military exercise such as OS Index. Collaborating with Japan, they have jointly initiated the Supply Chain Resilience Initiative aimed at fostering sustainable balance and inclusive growth in the Indo-Pacific region. Further, India and Australia have established the India-Australia Critical Minerals Investment Partnership, identifying five target projects, including two lithium and three cobalt ventures. The key features of India-Australia Economic Cooperation and Trade Agreement encompasses several crucial aspects. India stands to gain preferential market access on 100% of its tariff lines, especially benefiting key export sectors like gems, textiles and footwear. In reciprocation, Australia secures preferential access to over 70% of India's tariff lines, including significant raw materials and intermediaries such as coal, mineral ores and wines. The agreement also addresses vital areas like rules of origin, sanitary and phytosanitary measures, and dispute settlement. The significance of the India-Australia Economic Cooperation and Trade Agreement lies in its potential to elevate bilateral trade between the two nations with a targeted increase from approximately 27 billion US dollars to 45 to 50 US billion dollars within the next five years. Beyond economic growth, the agreement is poised to generate a substantial impact on employment, aiming to create at least 10 lakh jobs in India. Additionally, economic cooperation trade agreement creates a favorable environment for increased investment and promotes the growth of startups. The challenge to India-Australia Economic Cooperation Trade Agreement stems from India's past experience with trade agreements, revealing the limited utilization of full manufacturing potential. This is attributed to deficiencies in industry consolidation, logistical hurdles, and high compliance costs. The place in news for today is Denmark, with its capital, Copenhagen. Denmark's Queen Margaret II, Europe's longest reigning living monarch, announced plans to abdicate after 52 years. Talking about its political boundaries, the country is situated in Northern Europe, comprising of Jutland Peninsula and over 400 islands in the North Sea. It shares borders with Germany, Sweden and Norway, and its bordering water bodies are North Sea and Baltic Sea. Noteworthy geographical features include the Widing Forest Hill as the highest point, Lake Ereso as the largest lake, and Gudena River as the longest river. As we conclude today's main news, let's take a look at some quick updates. Recently, a Supreme Court judge has been nominated as the chairman of the Supreme Court Legal Services Committee. The committee is a statutory body, constituted under Section 3A of Legal Services Authorities Act 1987 by National Legal Service Authority. Its objective is to provide free legal services to poor, underprivileged and those marginalized in society. Its members include a chairman who is a sitting judge of Supreme Court and nine members nominated by the Chief Justice of India. A joint military exercise called the Desert Cyclone was concluded between India and UAE. Kyrgyzstan has acknowledged the snow leopard as a national symbol. Snow leopard, often termed as ghost of mountain, closely related to tiger species. Its features include smoky colored coats tinted with cream and yellow shades and patterned with black spots. These spots are called rosettes which are unique to every snow leopard. Its conservation status is vulnerable and it comes under Schedule 1 of Wildlife Protection Act 1972. Biodiversity Credit Alliance is increasingly pushing for use of biodiversity credits for financing targets under Kunming Montreal Global Biodiversity Framework. Biocredits provide a potential mechanism to finance conservation, restoration, and interventions addressing drivers of biodiversity loss, such as habitat degradation. Biodiversity Credit Alliance is a voluntary international alliance that brings together diverse stakeholders to support the Kunming Montreal Global Biodiversity Framework. Prime Minister has inaugurated an indigenously developed demonstration fast reactor fuel reprocessing plant at Indira Gandhi Centre for Atomic Research, Kalpakkam. The plant will reprocess spent fuel from the fast breeder reactor at the Kalpakkam Atomic Power Station. Fast breeder reactor breeds more material for a nuclear fission reaction than it consumes. It is the key to India's three-stage nuclear power program. Government is exploring the potential of direct-to-mobile technology. Direct-to-mobile is based on convergence of broadband and broadcast, using which mobile phones can receive terrestrial digital TV. It is similar to that of an FM radio, where a receiver within the device can tap into different radio frequencies. A two-month-old girl diagnosed with bubble baby syndrome became the youngest to receive bone marrow transplant from a voluntary donor. Bubble baby syndrome, also known medically as severe combined immunodeficiency, is a rare genetic order affecting the immune system. 
A baby with severe combined immunodeficiency completely lacks a functional immune system and is extremely vulnerable to severe and life-threatening infections. The Worli tribe has set up an example of peaceful coexistence with leopards near Sanjay Gandhi National Park in Maharashtra. They worship the leopard or Wagobha as a deity. The Worli tribe is among the largest tribes of Maharashtra region. They live on the outskirts of Mumbai in the North Sahidri region. They are renowned for Worli wall paintings. This art form can be traced back to the 10th century AD. Before we go, it's time to put your knowledge to the test in today's segment of Test Your Learning. Thank you for joining us. We hope you have enjoyed this edition of News Today. To get the answers to today's quiz and to download the PDF of News Today, make sure to check out the links in the description below.